Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about sparkling water. And this entire topic was completely spurred by the fact that I made a video discussing the difference between reverse osmosis water, distilled water, and tap water. I think spring water too, as to which one would be best for your plants, both indoors and out. And in that video, I got a ton of requests to do a video on sparkling water and whether or not there's a big difference between that and just regular water that is not carbonized so I dug into the literature surprisingly there are some research studies on this which just completely blows my mind but we'll be discussing those and the science behind why sparkling water carbonated water may be a better choice for your plants Let's jump straight into it. So sparkling water could be club soda. It could be water that is put into the ones, the DIY ones that you have at home. I think they're called soda streams. I have one um, that would be considered carbonized water, anything without the additional sugar. So yes, flavored waters would fall under this same scope. However, for the purposes of this video, we're going to leave out the flavored waters, which may contain artificial flavoring and stick more towards just carbonized water. So club soda, um, Perrier without the lime, or just the, the stuff you use at home. So the soda stream water with no flavoring. So when we look at carbonated water, we can see some macronutrients that are present, something very similar to what we see in spring water. So if spring water in particular is carbonized, it's there's some pretty large benefits to that. So just in regular club soda, for example, there's several macronutrients. So the three main ones are in there as well as sulfur, magnesium, and a little bit excess carbon, obviously due to the excess CO2. So if you were to use carbonated water for your plants indoors or out, the biggest thing to follow is that you would use it every second watering. You could use it every single time, but if you're adding fertilizer to it and stuff, you're going to find that it's going to fizz over. So go aim for every second time so you're able to incorporate excess like added fertilizer. Um, with just regular tap water and then you would do carbonated water without the fertilizer in it But other than that you just want it to be room temperature So don't take it out of the fridge and use it because it is it can shock your roots or it can shock your plants Especially if they're tinier plants. So seedlings in particular not a good idea to use cold water with so you want to keep it room temperature and if possible even sun warmed i say that all the time that is the best uh, potion or the best temperature water to water your plants with so this is where the science comes in a lot of studies found that plants watered with co2 infused water so carbonated water actually had better drought tolerance this may apply more so to gardeners than anything else and you're probably wondering, well, why is that? As many of you may know, photosynthesis, carbon dioxide is a huge portion of the photosynthetic formula and how photosynthesis is produced. By a miracle, it, in nature amazes me sometimes, roots actually are able to absorb CO2 in the soil. Now, generally, CO2 is not heavily abundant in the soil, and therefore, when it is placed in the soil in excess, the plant can actually get all its CO2 needs from the roots. This means the plant doesn't have to allow the guard cells to open up to allow the stomata to uptake that carbon dioxide. So typically in the process of photosynthesis, carbon dioxide is brought into the plant to help with the formulation of the carbohydrates used in photosynthesis through the stomata. And we've talked about this before. Once those stomata open up on the plant, the plant releases the exchange of that is water. So it's going to sweat out or e allow water to evaporate from the leaves. Meaning if we have excess CO2 in our soil through watering with carbonated water, we completely alleviate this issue because the stomata never have to open up again and therefore evaporation can't take place at an exponential rate. Meaning it's a lot better suited to surviving droughts. The other huge benefit we see when we have excess carbon in the soil is 
elevated levels of growth. Now, the studies can't confirm exactly what the cause or the increase in rapid vegetative growth is. They say it could be the carbon, but we'll maybe get into why or the theories why it could be something else a little bit later on. So this is where my brain gets triggered. So I'm gonna read this directly off of a study that was done. So a study was done on fruiting plants um, and foliage of plants watered with carbonated water. And the study showed when looking, comparing a control which wasn't watered just with regular water and a one that was watered with carbonated water, it showed that the fruit had higher concentrations of zinc, copper, iron, magne manganese, um, all of which were increased with carbonated water. And then the controls had lower levels of zinc, manganese, um, and then also copper and iron. So when we looked at the actual leaves, when we look at the leaves on the CW, they refer to it, so carbonated water treatment, um, we had higher levels of calcium in the leaves, magnesium, and then what else? Just higher calcium and magnesium. And then in the untreated or the control that was using regular water, we saw lower levels of these two. So this right away made me think, without even reading the rest of the study, I right away when I was reading this, I was starting to get excited and I was like, oh, the pH, what's the pH of carbonated water? And so sure enough, I did look that up and the pH of carbonated water is around a 4.5, which we know is incredibly low. And therefore, in my mind, I'm thinking that it temporarily, most likely, decreases the soil solution pH so you may have a pH that is higher because you've either amended your soil with say the lime we were talking about in another video when we're talking about amending our potting soil line or maybe you have a pH neutralized soil maybe you're buying like a fox farm soil you're spending a little extra cash for potting soil with an equalized pH when you add the carbonated water to it, it's going to make a solution. We call that a soil solution, meaning the porosity and the soil are no longer separate mechanisms. They're kind of, it's like a smoothie, it's all in one. So we had the raspberry separate from the yogurt and now we have the raspberry and the yogurt you know, blended together. And so that's what happens with our soil slurry or, so, or soil solution. Meaning so long as that carbonated water is suspended in the soil before the CO2 can you know, gas off over time, we end up with a lower pH. Meaning we're totally changing what nutrients can be uptaken in what volumes for that plant. So that temporary decrease in pH most likely is allowing for nutrients that generally is not captured at a lower pH or at the regular pH the potting soil is at, um, giving it you know 24 hours or a 12 hour period where the plant can uptake those nutrients and then reset or rebalance itself back to the soil pH that it originally needed. So one thing I will say about all the studies I found, there was one that did mention that if there's excess carbon in soil solution, they didn't see any correlation with exponential plant growth, meaning they didn't think excess garbage, carbon in the soil was going to be uptaken at a feverish pace, meaning that the um, theory of better drought tolerance would be nullified if you were to compare the journal that's saying it, d it does increase drought tolerance against the one that's saying there is no effect i mean those would kind of equal or balance each other out so there are arguments coming from both sides meaning this is not fact this is total theory at this point and there really isn't a lot of articles out there one article that was famously quoted in several blog posts i looked at was one done by the university of colorado and now I thought I could find this thing and it is wiped off the internet. It does not exist. I don't know if it ever exists, but they continually cited it because apparently in this study, it showed uh, exponential growth, like two times better growth for the plants underneath a carbonated water application. So something to keep in mind, I couldn't find that journal study again, but there's lots of studies that do reference it. So my thoughts are, you know what, I don't think the bubbles are going to add aeration. Um, you know, they might break up your soil structure a little bit, 
but in theory you don't actually want that disruption because then it's basically like a tillage. You are breaking apart the natural aggregates of your soil that have formed through our glues, our soil glues, our exudates from our uh, plant roots, the decomposition of our plant roots, the, the holes that the critters have made. So technically the carbonation, like the physical effects of carbonation would be negative when we're looking at soil or soilless medium. However, the lowering of the pH or the addition of those macronutrients, you know, obviously beneficial and also the addition of extra carbon. I mean, that should go unnoted typically, in, especially in a conventional uh, fertilizer scenario, you know, our carbon may be lacking in some cases because we're not adding in a lot of organic material. And so using a carbonated water will work wonders. Now, you can test this out. It's not going to harm anything. If you don't test it out, do I think you're missing out on something huge? There's nothing in the data to show me you are, but I would love to know what you guys think down in the comments, whether or not you've tried this and whether or not you're going to try your own experiments at home. I would just, I would love to know if you've tried carbonated water. I think the um, best scenario would be carbonated spring water sun warmed that would be like the ultimate water if you were to water a house plant with so just something to keep in mind i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did be sure to give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and as always let me know in the comments down below what videos you want to see next because my videos are all based off of what you guys want to see i will talk to you guys next time bye